out the packaging. This piece is a beast. Nice and heavy. Yeah, I'm not even a fan of this design. The Megatron. It's probably, no it is, it's second from last in the Bayverse Megatron designs for me. But when I saw the first promo, the first promo pics, right? I, I, you know, I was impressed. I was like, damn, I'm not even a fan of this design, but oh my God, this thing looks, looks like it might be decent. So when I got the figure in hand, I was even more impressed. I mean, I was sitting here like, damn, 3 Zero really knows how to shine up a turd. <laughs> oh, I'm just joking. I'm, I'm kidding, y'all. Don't, don't, don't come for me in the comments. All you Bayverse people who love this Megatron design. No, real talk though, this figure made me actually like the design, especially when you look at all the fine details. Now, I don't think there's anything they can do to say that first Megatron design. Oh my God, that thing is horrendous. That Megatron design looks like somebody took a grenade, made him eat it, he exploded, and then they tried to put him back together, and that's what you came up with. Just, just horrible. Now, the Megatrons that I really wish they go ahead and drop and stop playing it's the Dark of the Moon Megatron and the Last Night Megatron in DLX. Stop playing. Stop playing with me, 3-0, and get on that. Get the cooking, man. We need that. But um, let's get to it. So we've seen these before. They come with every 3-0 DLX figure. You got your base. You got your arm bar. This plugs in right here. This piece plugs in right there. It's posable. You lock this in with this switch here that locks it. Unlock it, pull it like that. As you can see, it's posable. And then this, you raise it up like that, push the button, and that lets it back down. You got little teeth right there in here. So that's how you move that around. You just unplug it plug it where you want this piece right here plugs into the spine of the figure pretty uh cut and dry pretty simple that's your base and your arm bar for doing your air poses or whatever or just to hold your figure up if you're worried about it falling over but that's it with this got your warranty sheet and then you got your instructions a lot of information in here. More on the back. You definitely should read this because um, there are a lot of moving parts and you don't want to break nothing. Just tell you how your figure poses and everything, how to put your batteries in, what you get, and that's pretty much it. All right, that's the instructions. You get your Edward scissor hands, and these things look freaky to me. You know what this looks like? Looks like that thing from the alien movies that come out and claw you and grab your face. Looks like a bug. Just so many things these things look like. Edward scissor hands. I mean, this even looks like it has little claws and scissors. That's what it looks like to me at least. But uh, these are pretty cool. And no, they are not posable. They are fixed, so it is what it is. They are painted pretty good and a lot of weathering. So, but yeah, that's your Edward scissor hands, your swappable hands. For your Megatron. These are, are cool. 
they are kind of freaky looking. <laughs> Megatron can't get no real hands in these movies I see. Oh wait, yes he did. He got some real hands. I think Dark of the Moon or maybe The Last Night. I know for sure he had real hands in The Last Night. But yeah, this is his hands. This is what he had to work with. Um, next you get your fusion cannon. It does not light up, but it is very well done. It's not symmetrical either. I mean, it's kind of, well, it is what it is. It's odd shaped, but it's dope though. I love this piece right here. That's very dope. Even got little teeth on the end. Look at the details in this thing. This is one heavily detailed piece. Look at that. Dope. My only gripe with this is this is not detachable. That would have been a nice touch. So you can stab prime, have this coming from the front. And I wish this was a uh, retractable also that it, it went in or they had like a swapped out piece to make this smaller. But other than that, it's cool. Like I said, expand and contract would have been cool. Detachable would have been cool, but um, it is what it is. And you just plug it in right here on the arm. So, well, yeah, it's a cool uh, fusion cannon. All right. One thing I do love about 3-0 and their LEDs, they use some of the easiest to find batteries. I mean, you could pick these bad boys up at the dollar store. I got so many of these, I could start a LR44 battery store. So they're the easiest to find and they're the cheapest. And they seem to last forever because I always use these. I think I still got the same batteries in my Bumblebee that I had when I first got the figure and it still comes on. So, yeah. But he also has the LED eyes and this thing is almost a pain to get to work. There it goes. Actually, that was pretty easy this time. But um, LEDs, the red looks real good. Really makes the scope pop. This is a very well sculpted scope but yeah this is this is dope now one of my gripes with this though is the fact that when you turn the eyes off the scope looks dead and I don't understand why these companies won't use either some type of transparent color plastic or use I've seen them where they do the paint where the, the eyes are painted and they still can light up and still look good because otherwise when you turn this light off come on the scope looks dead so yeah I, I really wish they would get away from just if you're gonna use the LED lights at least make it where the scope still looks good without the lights on but that does look good my other gripe with the scope is the fact that he can't close his mouth. So I wish they would have made the mouth plate movable so you can close it and open. Got a little bit more uh, personality out of the scope if you was able to do that with different poses. But outside of that though, this is a damn good scope. And these LEDs look real good on it. Yeah. So this thing has a nice weight to it. Really liking the, um, the rusted deco, the weathering. 
beautiful details, the skeletal design. And since I can't unsee it, I'm gonna make sure y'all can't unsee it either. Doesn't this look like an owl face? Those are the eyes, the nose, and I guess this the mouth area. Looks like an owl. And since I can't unsee it, you can't either now. You're welcome. But anyway, get back to the figure. The details on this thing is just bananas. The particulars are so well sculpted and crafted. But he is not symmetrical, so this is gonna drive somebody with OCD crazy. Cause he's got a lot of asymmetrical parts on him. Shoulders don't match. He got like these two things on this shoulder. He only got one on this side. I'm not a fan of how the knees curve in. That would That's driving me crazy. Cause it seems like they should be going straight down like these making me nuts the arms don't match this one looks longer than that one different designs the hands are different it just it's bananas but it's very well done look at the spine and this is what I love about 3-0 this is when they talk about no engineering and non-transformable figures they don't know what they're talking about. This is some beautiful engineering to have it where he does an ab crunch and there's a continuous with the spine. So there's no gaps, no hollow points. And then you just fold it back. Beautiful, beautiful. Look at this, look at that. This is stuff you don't see when you watch the movie. Like, look at this. The gears, the pistons, the treads. Look at the details and just the treads alone. Focus. Look at that. Stuff you miss when you watch the movie. The Cybertronian glyphs. Look at that. This is stuff you don't see when you're watching the movie. Bananas. Look at the chest. And the torso. Liking those, what is that? Bronze accents all throughout. Yeah, man. This is bananas. The jets on the legs. That jet pack is dope, even though it looks like an owl. Look at that. The eyes. He's looking at you. He's looking at you. <laughs> and I'm bumping the camera because I'm just so professional. But uh, yeah, that is dope. Look on the arm. Look at that. Look at the face go. Turn the eyes on. Turn on the eyes. There you go. Zero really did their thing with this piece. They always do though. Just crazy. Crazy. All right. So, I ain't gonna go over everything. That's what the instructions are for. But you can get that arm out there, this moves. You get that double elbow bend. It's the same on both sides. And of course, 3 0. 3 0 is known to have breakaway pieces. It's a ball joint. And if you hit that side too hard, this will pop out. I think it pops out a little too easy. I don't know what's up with 3 0 lately with their ball joints not staying securely tabbed in. But uh, it does go in. This ain't as bad as that Megatron that I had, the MDLX Megatron where the hip flap just kept falling. 
you even have to touch it and it will fall out. This, you gotta bump it and it'll fall so it's not as bad. See, like, I just bumped it now and it didn't fall out. But both arms do the same thing. Now, this was my fault. I knocked this off. This don't usually fall off, so I did that. But anyway, and since we are looking at the hand, it's on a ball joint, so it moves, swivels, rotates, whatever, right? We already seen the ab crunch, which is just crazy. The amount of ab crunch you get. Race rotation and upper torso rotation. Now for the legs, you got a few things going on. You move that out the way and you can get the leg up. Now you can go even further by pushing this down and you get that leg all the way up like that. Then you want to push that back up when you got the leg down. Now this, I love this. When you move, you spread his legs. <laughs> That's how bad. Uh, Alright, when you move his knee, you see that tread? The tread is moving. That is crazy look at that that's what I'm talking about now you can move this even further down and then there's a piece right in here that moves also like that and then it gets you your 90 degrees on that knee band let me show you from this side you gotta move a few things. You gotta move this, and you gotta adjust this joint right in here to get your knee band like that. All right, you got these pieces that move and get out your way for when you wanna move this, the rocker. And this can go up and down depending on how far you want it to sit out. But you can rock that right there like that, and you get some rotation on it. Yeah, he can do some posing. I mean, he he does have some limits. He doesn't have a drop down joint. I don't know why they didn't add drop down joint on here, but uh, he got a few limits, but it ain't enough to stop you from getting some some sick poses in. So, I mean, I got him in one right now, and I won't even try. Let me add a little bit more flavor to it. Bring the head like that. Yeah, so you can get some stuff with this bad boy. All right, let's talk about the elephant in the room, which is his color. Now, I've seen a few people complain about his color. Not a lot, but enough to say that 3 Zero screwed up on the color. Now, when I went and watched the movie, well, I didn't watch the whole movie, but I went, I went on YouTube and watched, what is the video called? All Megatron Scenes. I watched one of those videos because I, I, can't, I can't watch Revenge of the Fallen. It's just a, it's a garbage movie to me. It's trash, uber trash. But um, all the clips, you couldn't really tell what color he was supposed to be. Now, if you're going off the first movie, he was silver, gray, whatever, in that, in that color family, right? But in this movie, he had been at the bottom of the water. I don't know if he was in, a, what was he in, the ocean, the lake, what was he in? Whatever body of water he was in. And he was down there for a little bit of time. So my thought is he was down there rusting and all that other stuff, which is how he looks. Now, most of the scenes that I saw, he had a real rusted tan color look to him. He looked like this. And then in the other shots, 
It wasn't that many. It was like a couple. It was like one scene where he was standing up on a tower and holding the, uh, holding like the antenna up. He looked like a dirty gray or a dirty silver, you know, transformer. With rust stains everywhere, right? And then there are other scenes where he does look tan, but he's not this dark. But most of the scenes did have him looking pretty much this color. Maybe not as dark. Now, since 3-0 has the license to make these figures. And they got this thing down. I mean, down to like little details like that. What we looked at earlier. Hasbro and who who does the transform moves paramount is it paramount correct me if i'm wrong in the comments but i'm pretty sure hasbro and paramount give them the exact renders uh designs whatever they need to create this figure with the accurate colors and all of that right so i'm pretty sure that the design and the color that we got is the actual color of megatron in the movie so i'm gonna go with that i don't have no problem with this color i think it looks damn good he's a rusty weathered beast and i'm okay with it i'm cool especially in person you see this thing in person you're gonna be like yeah i'm good i ain't tripping off of that so that's my thoughts on the color of Megatron. And this looks about right. And they look good together. I gotta admit, this is gonna be uh, great for some good shots. Although he is a pain in the ass to pose because there's just so many moving parts and just stuff you touch as you trying to, well, you know what, this ain't about him, it's about him. But that's the two together, that's what they look like, there you go. I wasn't even a fan of this design, yet somehow, 3-0 found a way to change my heart. <laughs> oh man, this thing is stunning. Beautiful craftsmanship, the attention to details, even even for something as small as the chain links inside the leg, like that is serious dedication. I know there's some contention over the color. Well, probably just, I ain't seen too many people complaining, but it's a few. But as I stated earlier, I'm fine with it. Although Megatron should be within the gray silver family, as far as his paint job, I'm okay with the rusted tan look, considering his body was in the ocean, just rusting away. So, I'm good. Uh, this would have been a four star figure, maybe even 4.5, but my few little minor issues and gripes just wouldn't let me make it so. And that little piece falling off his shoulder, the more I got into the video, the more it just kept falling off. Like, I don't know what's up with 3-0 lately. And these little pieces just constantly falling off. Got to make that ball joint thicker or the plug it plugs into tighter or something. It gets annoying that you got to keep putting something back on every time you're trying to pose them. So, yeah, it, I had to go with the three and a half stars out of five just for my little complaints and gripes that y'all got throughout the video. It's still a gorgeous piece though. If you collect the DLX line, the movie figures, especially if you're a big fan of the Bayverse, you'll love this figure. It'll fit right into your collection. And that's it for me. I'm gonna get up out of here. I'll see y'all at the next figure. I'm out. Peace.